My name is Ramson, and welcome back to Wild Frost, where I still need to get 50 shell on a single target in order to unlock the final charm. Oh, and I'm not certain if any of you are going to be doing that for me. We have Krolan, Krulan rather, uh, applies 2 frost on a counter of 4, 5 damage and 8 health. I mean, honestly, in terms of Snow Dweller champions, and I probably do want a bigger Snow, uh, Snow Dweller champion here to have access to more Snow Dweller companions and cards, that's far more access to... Shell. It's also Marmot and Shadow. Um, I mean, look, if I am focusing on this, I'm just gonna take Crawlin. And... Let me just very quickly try and remind myself. Ah, yes, of course. Nekohime the second. Oh, there you go. Alright. None of you are particularly shellful. Sneasel or Spike seem to be the most likely choices here for me. Uh, if I frost an enemy, them doing less damage to a character that is, you know, benefiting from being hit, either Spike or Sneasel, seems most appropriate. Um, I'm going to take Spike specifically because of the ability for Spike to get early combats to have a ridiculous amount of combo in. Move to the first battle. Changoon Pangoon, Wild Snoop. Okay. So, how do I line this up best? Snoop and Changoon are each going to attack in three turns' time. Pangoon on the bottom line attacks in two turns' time. So, one of the problems we have here is if I scrappy sword the Wild Snoop. I set it up to die in two turns time, but then I have to spend two other scrappy swords on the Chungoon in order to get it to a similar position. So am I aiming instead for Neko to do the finish on Chungoon on the top line? Because if I'm doing that, that's in four turns time, which gives me the ability to wait until Pengoon attacks for a second time and hits Spike and dies there, so that would be the order right now. Uh, one problem there is I'm not going to have anyone to defend against the Wild Snoof, but also I'm only going to need one Scrappy Sword played, which gives me the ability to play- Oh! If I use the Flame Water on Nekahime, I can actually get a similar effect. Throw a scrappy sword at the snoof. So Chungoon dies to Neko. Pengoon attacks Spike, and I have to throw a scrappy sword at the wild snoof on the top line. Yeah? Yeah. Uh ooh. Un problem. If I put a wood head out on that top line, we're gonna have a bad time. Um, that's okay, that's okay. I can still do this by only taking one damage, allowing Chungoon to strike Neko. You orient on the top line, Pengoon dies against Spike, Neko kills Chungoon, and the sword kills the dog. Free time combo. I mean... Only seems appropriate to put Spike on the top line against the Waddle Goon, what with all those shells, all that little damage. Um, I will throw a snow stick at the Goblin, to see if I can get as much money out of that as is possible. Honestly, probably gonna snow stick him again. I could frost the hell out of the Waddle Goon as well right now with the Sun Rod. I think I will. Forces myself to attack first. The enemy now does no damage to Spike, but takes a bunch of damage to them instead. Waddle Goon dies in 5 health time. Welcome, more Pengoons. So, in 2 turns time, Waddle... well, Neko attacks. The Waddle Goon attacks one, two, three times and dies. Um, Pengoon attacks and dies, Pengoon attacks and dies, Pengoon attacks and dies. 
Right, so all I need to do is be able to also take out this goblin next round. And... I can do that in a number of different ways, in fact. Throw a single scrappy sword at the goblin. And cycle. Hmm, I could even use this as extra damage against Big Peng if I want to just throw a scrappy sword at the goblin, and in fact I think I do. One down, two down, three down, four down. Strike the enemy and make him weaker. Two scrappy swords worth will take you. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Wait, they were gonna respawn enemies! Uh, unfortunately, well, Spike doesn't really have that much health left, so it's not like I really could have gotten that many combos past that point. I was wondering if I was gonna get a ridiculously early shot there. Uh, I, I've gotta spend more time going to Frozen Travelers if I wanna find any companions that give me the ability to get some... Shell? Hello, Colonel. When hit, apply three shell to the enemy behind. You're not gonna be capable of stacking 50 shell on a single target. Certainly help me. And also, you'll give me the ability to draft other characters that care about shell but don't necessarily generate it. Frostbell, Shroomine, Sunlight Drum. There's also a Berry Basket here, but that's one that I. Well, the Berry Basket was the one I was least interested in, but should it be? Restore two health in Barrage. Got a lot of healthy characters. I've got characters, two characters, in fact, that both want to be hit. Uh, although they'll also probably want to stand on different lines, which is going to make the berry basket line up difficult. I will say Frostbell also accomplishes a similar effect by allowing me to get characters hit without taking as much damage. And Frostbell carries, in my opinion, uh, a much better charm potential because it's barrage against the enemies with zero damage on. So you can just add a snow charm to this and you freeze the entire line for a turn. Uh, or other things. That's just the one that immediately came to mind because I've done it recently. It was quite nice. Tiny Taiko, when hit, gain frenzy. I mean, I really don't want to like hard buff a Tiny Taiko like that. Hmm. I don't. Well, I don't really have that much damage in the deck right now. Like, I mostly respond to enemies, which is why I want to take Wart, but I also don't want to take Wart because. I know what Ward is. I know how powerful Ward is. But I need damage, so welcome to the team, buddy. Heading into the next battle. Mimic on the top line with the extra scrap helm. Definitely seems like in four turns time I need to land the kills if I intend to. So Porcupine's going to barrage for two damage on the bottom line. Neko, if I give them the flame water here, we'll be able to respond for a full kill. That said, probably don't want them to. Putting Ward in the front line against the Frostinger means that they'll only be taking you know, three damage, uh, as well as a Frost that they don't care about. It gives me the ability to try and start setting up some stuff. Hmm... I guess Spike could also take the same damage and it wouldn't be too offended about it. Wart can poison the Porcupine in two turns time. Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough. I can't kill the Frostinger on the top line without using Neko. And I can't use Neko this turn. Huh. I'm going to Flame Water Neko. And the Frostinger is going to attack and Spike is going to attack. Wart's going to poison the Everloving heck out of that Porcupine. And then... I mean... Honestly, the Porcupine just dies of its own poison in the next round, so I could just put Woodhead down on the bottom row. I could even just Snowstick the Porcupine. Guarantee it that way. 
So it dies at the end of the next round. Neko kills Frostinger. If Frostinger attacks Spike, it dies at the end of the next round. So realistically, what do I need to do? If I want to get a combo here that is not currently available, I need to throw a... Well, I can't throw Snow Stick. Wait. Yeah, if I throw the Scrappy Sword, the Mimic will attack against Spike and also die. So I have to use Snow Stick this turn. And then I'm committed to also throw another instance of damage at the Mimic on the next turn. I think I've done this correct. Scrappy Sword for the Mimic. And that should be the end of it. Porcupine is dying of their own shroom on the bottom line anyway, so I don't need to you know, put Spike there instead or anything like that. In fact, I'd prefer Spike to have more health later on in the fight. There's a three-time kill combo. Hello, Mimic and Ice Lantern. There's a snow stick currently in my hand, and there's not guaranteed to be one next turn. I think it's pretty important I snow stick goblin. Also, the Ice Lantern has two health. Another scrap unit with extra health. Oof. That can be a toughie. I'm gonna give Flame Water to Wart. I would like the opportunity, there we go, to possibly kill the Ice Lantern on the bottom line this round. I just don't wanna have to take all of that excess damage. So the Frostinger attacking will do no damage to Spike if I do this in a very specific way. Do I wanna settle for a two time combo here? I think I will, actually. So that would be Sunrod on Neko to force the early attack, then the Frostinger and Mimic both attack Spike and die. We're left with a Goblin on the bottom line. And in fact, this gives me a free turn, basically, to play Colonel. I'd love to play Frostbell on that top line. I don't necessarily need to play uh, Scrappy Sword. Oh, maybe I need to play Scrappy Sword this turn. What's the maximum amount of combo I can realistically get here? I've got a Scrappy Sword in the next hand, so I know that I'm more than happy to redraw right now. So if I Scrappy Sword Goblin... We take them out this round. I mean, I can't snow stick them. They'll still die at the end of the round. And poison, or rather shroom, doesn't count as a hit. It's just dealing damage at the end of each turn, so... Wouldn't really alter any of the outcomes here. Well, I guess the outcome it alters is that I would get four more gold, but I would deal six less damage... Uh, four more bling, but I would deal six less damage against the ringer. Which doesn't necessarily seem like a great opportunity for me. Mm, so Colonel was the one that was hit there. I'm thinking Neko just hitting Ringer like waiting and then doing that in four turns time is probably right. So Frostinger is going to attack and take two damage. It's going to take one damage to Colonel as well. I think I just need some excess damage out on the field suddenly, and the best way for me to accomplish that is to get Wart to try and start poisoning some stuff. Yeah, Porcupine's now dead this turn. Although, unfortunately, I don't have a plan to get a second kill this turn. So, realistically, all I did is just split up all of the kills. Oof. Um, slow this ringer. Okay. 
Now, what can poison the frosting are guaranteeing that they die next turn? And with a single woodhead on the bottom line, I feel now pretty comfortable. I'm going to quickly just take Wart off the field and Colonel off the field. Uh, Frostinger attacks Spike and dies, and then the Ringer attacks Spike and also dies. I just want Spike to be able to, you know, kind of, I guess lavish in the blood is the first, first four words that came to my mind. I... Hey, we're not really having a choice here. It's just treasure on each side and then... Forgotten Traveler. Frozen Traveler, rather. Noomlin Biscuit. Especially for the possibility of giving Noomlin Biscuit to a shell generating card. Baby. Baby, baby, baby. Thanks, Frozen Traveler. We've got Bonnie, Yuki, Bomb Bomb. Whenever anything is snowed, gain equal damage, says Yuki. I don't really intend to snow things that much. I could take Bomb Bomb and just have you ready to throw into a battle if I absolutely need you. Um, have you on a secondary line? Possibly even replace Wart. Wart doesn't have that much HP, which does put Wart in a pretty tough position. In fact, this whole deck is in a pretty tough position against the Spikes fight. I'm taking Bomb Bomb specifically for the possibility of the spikes fight otherwise killing me. Let's go to the Woolly Snail. Molten Dips, great. I need to get a crown. That's just a thing that needs to happen. Slap Crackers, Peppering. Adds two spice in barrage. Just don't think that's relevant to us. Spore pack for shroom in barrage is quite nice. Uh, Molten dip, honestly, probably just not this run. I'm gonna take a charm. It's possible I end up just taking another charm after this. Sun charm, reduce counter by one. Interesting. Neko activating more often is very powerful. It's just, it's a lot of damage. And the Frost is very relevant, especially against Multi-Strikers. I'm gonna take another Charm, yeah. Goat, apply a Demonize. So applying a Demonize in Barrage with the Frost Bell. Oh, baby. That's exactly the kind of thing we want to do. Get him. I'm very glad to have Frost Bell as well, because like it just gives me a useful target for a lot of Charms that I otherwise mightn't have one for. Sun Charm really does feel like a Neko play right now, but I don't think Neko needs to hold it right now. And I'd really like to hold off on it if possible, because if I do find another Frozen Traveler and I can find someone who generates Shell better, you know what? Let's actually think about that beforehand, right? Let's just give that a wee bit of a... What? Oh, that's prob... Wait, no, I can't unlock you. What? Is is it? Oh, these these aren't people I've not never seen before. These are people I've never taken before. Oh, this actually gives me a pretty good list of things that I should probably try and experiment with. Interestingly, uh, okay, this person is shell related. Can't remember a thing about them, unfortunately. This person is not. Uh, this person. Uh, you activate on sacrifice of additional units. You're the Haze Blazer. That's tiny berry of some kind. Mini Mika? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really seeing many shell related ones. For a reason I can only expect. Hmm. Oh. That's the shell charm. Start with eight shell, right? The one that I haven't got unlocked. 
So I really want it quite badly. Let's go to the boss. Oh, of course, it can't be the Smikes boss yet. Anyhow, still think I'm fine with this. Makoko is about to help provide some extra... Uh, extra shielding to one of our characters? I think the right play here is definitely Noomlin on the Sunrod, so I have the ability to kind of control turns. And given the fact that Makoko has 8 health, if I use a Flame Water on Bomb Bomb, I can set them up much better. To be able to take out a significant amount of enemies at the same time. So in two turns time, I'm set up to kill two units on the board right now. Am I? Boy, uh, satisfied with just two units? Or do I want to wait until the reload? Because Bomb Bomb's going to be able to strike the back line, especially. That would that, that would take me to three units instead. Like it's not, unfortunately, as dramatic a difference as I might want. Probably have to freeze Porcupine next turn. No, I don't really have a way to prevent killing everything next turn instead. Okay, no, I'm just gonna Sunrod Neko to strike Porcupine now. That'll prevent Porcupine from dealing any damage in their barrage. And heck, if I'm realistic with you, I don't think Makoko on the top line needs to be attacking anymore. I'm gonna freeze you with a snow stick. Pop a bomb bomb on the bottom line. And watch the chaos. Yes. As it turns out, bomb bomb actually wouldn't have been able to take out the additional unit on the top line anyway, so I'm very glad I cycled. Frostbell. Remove damage. Make vulnerable. Uh, so Neko will kill Infinoko, or rather transform Infinoko, at the first available opportunity after a Frostbell has been put in down. I need the additional damage most on the top line to help me there. Cycling towards uh, that Sunrod does seem like a really good idea here. It gives me the ability to suddenly force Bomb Bomb's attack next turn. I guess I also don't actually need that. As much as I want that, I might not need it. Pop a spike out on the board. Goodbye, Finoko. Hello, Infinoka. Frostinger is currently attempting to attack for two damage on the bottom line. Well, two damage, sorry. Uh, one damage, one frost on the bottom line against Colonel. I don't want the Porcupine to strike Spike next turn. Because if it does... Uh, it will take the excess demonized damage to that and then not die to Bomb Bomb the turn after. So right now, I have a setup for Bomb Bomb being able to kill both of these units next turn. Either at the end of next turn or at the start of next turn if I cycle right now in order to get towards the Sunrod. And if I put Woodhead... On the top line, and allow the Frostinger to attack here, I can use a Scrappy Sword this turn against the Porcupine and a Scrappy Sword next turn against the Porcupine. And after the completion of both of those, I will have killed three units in the same turn. Pretty good. For a fight like this, pretty good. I could tech 
technically throw Woodhead back into the deck, but Infinoco's gonna attack it. I'd prefer that, I think. I'll also have Infinoco attack Colonel. Colonel will only have 4 HP left. Sorry, 2 HP left after taking this 4 damage. Let's do it. Scrappy Sword on Porcupine. One unit down. Two and three. Okay. I probably want to throw Colonel back into the deck before I cycle right now. If I actually want to have any reasonable longevity here. So let's do it. There it is. We found it. Reasonable longevity. So in four turns time, Bomb Bomb takes out Frostinger on the bottom, uh, bottom line. Two Frostingers on the bottom line, mind. Hmm. Eight damage, five damage. Two turns time, so you'll also have struck Spike with four damage away from being able to take out Infinoco. Colonel's not going to act in time. So I think I Sunrod Bomb Bomb right now. Currently I can account for, again, 15 damage on Infinoco. The big problem, as I see it, is that Bomb Bomb currently has to take the Frost from the two Frostingers on the bottom line, and that'll prevent them from being able to kill the enemy. I could actually line everyone up. I could... I could actually theoretically do that. You know what? Let's. Scrappy Sword in Finoco this turn. Makoko attacks Spike. Infinoco attacks Spike 4. And then another 6. Yeah, unfortunately Spike is currently dying to this. I don't want that. 3. 4, 5. And then 6 from Bomb Bomb. Okay, how else can this be done? Let's put Spike back on the top line. Only one Frostinger is actually attacking this turn. So, Infinoco and the Frostinger deal four damage to Bomb Bomb, who still has eight health. That gives them the ability to survive this attack. Bomb Bomb is only doing seven damage in response. But if I gave you a Flame Water, you would be dealing 8 again. The only problem is Infinoco doesn't die in that fashion. I think I just let Spike take the damage here. And keep my triple kill. Two damage to a Scrappy Sword, two damage to Spike. 13, 8 and 5. Takes you out. Alright. Unfortunately, exact damage on Spike. 
There's that combo, though. Card draw, redraw bell counter. I mean, admittedly, I would love to be able to take an additional companion here. It's just I also don't necessarily think they'll be good for us. You know, the counter charm and the demon eyes both would have worked really well on Wart, but I'm trying to go with this whole uh, shell thing so that I can complete the unlocks. Got to take the card draw. Spike only has four health in the next fight. Sad. Oh, you know what? I'm actually quite glad that you've put the woolly snail on the bottom line here to justify me going this way. Please. Ugh. Well, doesn't feel like I'm gonna get the get the, get the get the achievement this time. Fivest, when health is lost, gain equal damage. Snuffle applies once known to all enemies, and Lawberry, when healed, gain two health. I don't really do healing so much. I kind of want to take either Firefist or Lawberry. I, I've never taken either of them before. But, like, jeez. You know who's really good in the final fight? Snuffle. You know who isn't? Both of the other characters here. I'm going to take the Snuffle. I'm probably not even going to add it to the deck. This time. Yeah, spikes are getting cons considerably less powerful right now. Honestly, if I took Bomb Bomb out and put Ward in, we have just like a very, very powerful deck. Head up to the Woolly Snail. Lacey! Add Frenzy, increase counter by one and consume. Add Frenzy, increase counter by one and consume. Um, we can see Berry Blade with the ability to help us heal Colonel in the front line seems particularly powerful. I'm going to take a Lumen Goopin. Going to take a Crown because you got to take the Crowns. Going to take the Crown off of Bomb Bomb so that I may crown the rest of my units. Wharton Snuffle. Yeah, so just gonna berry blade. I definitely can't take the charm. If I take the charm, I can take blaze tea. I really do want the berry blade though. Is the the large problem with that? Berry blade also has the possibility of targeting a demonized target. We do have set up for that through the frost bell. Hmm. Berry Blade would also be a good target for some damage increased charms if I ever found any. Blaze T to add Frenzy. Frenzy is always pretty good. I mean, look, if I put Frenzy and Counter Increase on Snuffle, and then I also put Counter Decrease on Snuffle from Sun Charm, they can permanently freeze the enemies in the final fight. I would be able to very comfortably make my way through that. I'm just going to be hurting for health for a while, I guess. Great charm! Deal an additional damage for every 50 bling that you have. Man. You know, I actually really wish I still had the ability to buy the berry blade. Because that would be a real good opportunity. I'm going to take the blaze tea. Wait. Let's go. The fight. Time for a battle. Oh, wow, you're just gonna flex on me, show that you can do what I can't? How dare you. So the Shell Witch is gonna activate two times, which I really don't want it to do, because it'll give four Shell to all allies, which is a lot of allies. So, ideally, I'll kill them much quicker than that. One of the quickest ways I could kill them, theoretically, would be a single Scrappy Sword and Sunrod on Neko. Honestly, I'm gonna get Wart to poison faster. I'd love the backliner to take damage, but if they don't, I'm not gonna be too stressed about it. 
because they still have snow sticks for that unit. One snow stick for the pecan guarantees that Neko will be able to kill them. And then a snow stick for Konka guarantees that I'm going to be able to get more freezes out with Snuffle. So I've got three attackers this turn. Neko plus the Scrappy Sword kills on the bottom line. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any combination that kills on the top line. But maybe I could set up a better combination. So three and four this turn are being dealt, so seven. And Conquer will be vulnerable on a later turn. I'm going to... wait. Seven, right? And then they're taking three at the end of the next turn. So yeah, Conquer on the top line doesn't die unless I intercede with a, a Scrappy Sword right now, so I do. And it dies next turn, not this turn. And that's important, because it gives me the ability to just throw a single Scrappy Sword at the Pecan on the bottom line. Which I'm actually not guaranteed to have access to in the next hand. Oof. Do I just want to double kill here? Like, really? I feel like without my spikes at the moment, and again, the spikes weren't going to be great in this fight, unfortunately. But I feel like without my spikes at the moment, I kind of just have to settle for the double kill. Noomlin on Frostbell would be ridiculous. So I'll do it. Definitely put my cross spell up on that top line. I think I just need additional damage out of Neko, frankly, if I'm going to be able to do much here. So I'm going to Blaze Team Neko to give them Frenzy. Oh, of course I should have had a unit behind Colonel on the top line. My bad. You'll take three damage this turn. You'll gain shell. You'll take another three damage. You'll be ready to die to your own poison next turn. I'm gonna snow stick the goblin to keep them here. Hello, Bulgo. So Neko is gonna deal 10 damage to Konko in the first hit, and then another five. For a total of 15 against the 19 the enemy has. I can't amplify that with a Scrappy Sword, really. I can amplify it with Flame Water. Unfortunately, we'll still be exactly one damage short of taking that Conqueror out this round, which means that the Pecan is not really going to be affected. Okay. Well, you do what you can. That is to say, I'm not getting a combo kill on the bottom line. Uh, so the Conker is definitely not dealing any damage on the top line. I can happily have you hit Colonel. What? I would love you to start poisoning a target, but... I should work on everyone except for Bolgo on the bottom line first. Just for curiosity's sake, let's say. I'm going to Sunrod Snuffle in order to get a faster freeze here. Good, good. Snow stick the goblin, just keep him around so I can try and gobble some more money out of ya. Shellwitch on the top line is currently attacking for two, would happily die to Colonel here. Bolgo, though, is dealing five damage on the bottom line. I could block that with a woodhead. I, in fact, I could block that with basically any of my units on board except for Colonel. I can't get a multi kill of any kind this turn.
Let's throw another snow stick on Gobbling on the bottom line. Wart poisons the top. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna low damage and, and, and make you all sad on the top line. Uh, I don't have a great block on that top line, so there's two different ways I could approach this. I could use the... the uh, 12, 6. Okay, actually the best way to do this is Sunrod Snuffle to get a freeze early. That forces Conker not to attack. Neko can then just kill two units in a row on the top line. And then I can start focusing very slowly on taking the Goblin down with as many hits as it can take to do so. Uh, and... Ball go down thereafter. Yeah, I'll give the enemy a free turn here. Goblin's dying at the end of this turn. I mean, Neko can't really do anything to Bolgo, really, this turn. Um, if I want the Goblin to still take another hit before it dies to the Shroom that it's just inevitably gonna die to here. I'm gonna have to use a Scrappy Sword. Let's do this manually. Time for a couple snow sticks on Bolgo. Keep you as frozen as it can do. Nice. And then with a wee bit of extra poison out from Wart this turn, we can guarantee the kill. Goodbye, Bolgo. Hello, victory screen. I'll get it just recovered from injury. Let's first go to the treasure. Please give me a shell shield of some kind. Shellbow. Wait a second, though. Frost Bloom, apply three Frost, cool. They're it, 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 all or three to a single. I prefer this. Uh, Kobonka, I've never seen you before. Trigger against anything that is hit with snow. I got the, the ward, I got the, the ice snow bonker and we got the Kobonka holding the greed charm and Snoffle with the sun charm. Oh, that does seem really good. I will say, Shellbow dealing two damage to all of my units, like, it does at least trigger Colonel as well. Oh, that's also a huge amount of shell if I use the Lumen on it. And then the final is Moko Totem, which I don't think I've seen since my very first run. Trigger when Spice reaches 10, then you destroy yourself. So you deal 50 damage and then die. Not keen on the Moko Totem. Uh, it's Kobonker or Shelbo here, 100%. It ultimately just comes down to whether or not I think I have to give up already. Oh my god, I can dupe Kobonker. I could also dupe Shelbo if you fair. If either of them got a Noomlin, good gosh. Well, let's think about it from this direction. What do I currently do in the final fight? Die quite quickly? Is the answer die quite quickly? Because it looks like it's die quite quickly, actually. Save for Snoffle shenanigans, the answer is die quite quickly. I'm taking Kobonka. I'm not thrilled to be doing this. But I'm not dismayed. 
All right, Char Merchant. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Uh, Chrono, while active, add a frenzy to all of your crowned allies. That's Snuffle. Snuffle just gets frenzy from that. There's also Pinch Charm, gain draw two on kill. There's Hog Headed Charm and Battle Charm for plus two damage. Plus two damage from the Battle Charm on Kobonka. And I don't think that's necessary. I honestly think just Greed is going to be taking care of that because Kobonka is going to be getting a bunch of combos. I think I take Chrono. And honestly, I could probably even then give a crown to Kobonka. I'm going to take Chrono. I'm going to give the Greed Charm to Kobonka. I'm going to give the Sun Charm to Snoffle. I'm going to remove Wart and Colonel's crowns and give a crown to Chrono and Kobonka. Boy, howdy. The big problem is uh, Kobonko only having one health, right? We might run into a significant problem before we have the ability to actually utilize it to its fullest extent. But if we don't, but if we don't. Second Kobonko. No spikes! Oh god, why is it always spikes? Alright. And there goes Snuffle. Chrono. It does give the crown for the thing in the thing! Oh my god. Oh my god. First things first, I need to kill Marrow. As quickly as is humanly possible. Kobonka unfortunately has aimless, which I think means if I snow stick Marrow, Kobonka will try and trigger, but then will aimlessly attack. The enemies are split in like basically the worst possible way. I'm kind of mortified, to be frank. Okay, I think I know a play. I'm gonna Frostbell the top line. big problems I have right now is if Neko attacks and aimlessly hits Grumble in the back line, I take 4 damage and I deal 10, but if I aimlessly attack again and hit Grumble in the back line again, I die. Game over. I can't remove the aimless because you have spikes, and I can't remove the spikes because I have aimless, forcing me to attack two different targets. This fight is definitely like the peak of difficulty in the middle of a run uh, for so many builds. I don't want to lose this one, it's so good. Uh, I 
Okay, I know my play. I snow stick the marrow. We see if Kobonka manages to take the unit out. Interesting. It attacked directly. Is that going to be consistent? I didn't think it would be, but... I also didn't expect this outcome we're currently seeing. I'm going to put Ward on the bottom line and hope that when Snuffle freezes everyone right now, Marrow gets the frost first, <laughs> dies, and then, yeah, unfortunately, I do lose my next unit because Grumble does have teeth on them because they had a teeth charm as well. But now... My next Kobonka in the deck, of course I've got another one, uh, is going to be much more comfortable. I'm gonna Sunrod Wart in order to cause enough poison on Smog this round that I start to feel pretty confident. The pawpaws are also going to be a huge problem here. I need to get Colonel down on the board as soon as possible. So I can't put Kobonker out there, because Kobonker will currently uh, attack a Pawpaw, and then attack that Pawpaw again and die. Unfortunately, the Pawpaw on the top line also gains three teeth every time they're attacked. Wart's only going to attack two times, but that'll set up a lot of damage for us, thankfully. I'm going to give Wart some damage to attack with as well. I need the damage to come out a bit faster here, so that I know the Pawpaw is going to die before it ever gets another attack. And I'm not going to frost anything until the next pawpaws off the field, so I can put out Kobonka now. So Neko's going to attack pawpaw two times here, and then Colonel's going to attack the goblin in the back line. And unfortunately, we won't be able to take everything out here. But if I scrappy saw the goblin, I can get a little bit more money. There's our two-term combo. Snuffle is now ready to kill Kobonka. So ward attacks two times. Yeah, currently Kobonka just dies if I let them uh, on the field at all. I gotta throw him back to hand. I don't want to do that, but... Gotta do what you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna give some additional damage to Ward on the top line. There we go. Guarantees the pawpaw is now dead without any further interaction on my part. And I can also kill the goblin this turn, should I want. And I should. Throw a scrappy saw there. Pawpaw on the top line turn. Dies. That's two. I'm going to put a kabonker out on the field. Do I put the kabonker out on the field? Mordor unfreezes next turn. 
So suddenly things become pretty drastic. Oh, but I just snow stick. Never mind. I'm going to snow stick more jaw. Turbonka punches you. And then Wart freezes you. Hmm, Echo attacks a couple times, and then more co-bonking. Yeah, all of that was pretty good. I'm gonna cycle now. I'm just gonna get Snuffle to freeze everyone again twice, which will force Kobonko to attack two times. I'm glad we got through this fight. We didn't get a huge amount of money out of it, but that's okay. Speaking of a huge amount of money, there's some money. Here's a treasure that has the other half of the broken vase. Other half of our lumen. And if I move one space forward... Oh my god, there's a shell shield there, really. Uh, I wanted to do that run, but this run is a different run now. You have to understand, this run's so different now. Frenzy to all units that have a crown, so if I just put another crown on the next Kobonka. My big feeling right now is like, yeah, I do kind of need some additional health for the last fight. But... how much? If I put these Kobonkas on a different line than the... The... Uh, what? The, the aimless attacker. Actually, I can't put it on a different line to both the Aimless and the Barrage attackers, so I'm going to have to use some sort of damage reduction on the enemies. Shell Shield. I don't think I can throw additional Shell on top of uh, Scrap. Maybe I can, actually. I think I might have seen that before. single charm for 50 is still pretty appealing, even if I do want to keep as much money as possible for the sake of the uh, greed triggers here for the Kobonkas. Book charm. Gang yank. Pull the target to the front. Uh, you know, honestly, I think I'm going to put that on a snow stick so that I have the opportunity of revealing the aimless attacker or the barrage attacker, should I find them more problematic than I am currently capable of dealing with. Colonel with as little health as they currently have and only the support of a frost bell. Like, currently this is a deck that doesn't survive. It deals damage or dies. That's it. The two options. I'll take a shell shield. I didn't want to play that safe, but I'll play that safe. This is this is probably correct. Head to the boss. Oh, Krunker? What are you doing here, Krunker? Wait, that drink on the top line has smackback. Rude. Although, actually, you can't trigger smackback while you're frozen, so never mind, we're fine. Neku, Snuffle, Kubonk, Krunu, Kubonk. I need to get Snuffle. To act first. I'm gonna cycle my hand. There's the Sunrod. I'm gonna Sunrod Snuffle, forcing them to freeze everything two times. And each of my co-bonkers to attack everything on the field two times. Krunker is split. Ooh. Unfortunately, Krunker, you're still targeting some lines that I care about, but if I reorganize things, you can't take out either of the units you're targeting. Oh, hilariously, I could also just snow stick you this turn.
and then at the end of the next turn, Snuffle will do it twice. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. That's it. Kronk is down. What was that, turn three kill? We draw bell counter reduction, of course, because there's no way I'm including another unit in this deck at this point. Money. I mean, honestly, like, the amount of charms that, like, significantly change the activations of my deck at the moment, eh, relatively minimal. The fact that money would give Kobonkers the ability to just remove things from the field is quite powerful. Oh. Oh. I need another crown. I just realized the thing. Oh, it burst us. Thankfully, bursters act very slow, so... We're not really gonna have any problems here, I can't imagine. Except against that crab with the teeth. Mm, that crab's actually gonna be a nightmare. Oh, teeth are so annoying. Getting Neko to attack as quickly as possible, unfortunately, wouldn't even help me take out that crab. And if I ever freeze that crab, it will just take out as many Kobonkers as can attack it. So what do I need? How do I deal with that? Realistically, I don't have a clue. It's probably... Something along the lines of end up taking both Kobonkers off the field, a thing I deeply do not want to do. Gonna Noomlin my Frost Bell? bad boy on the top line. Next turn, Snuffle will freeze everything, and unfortunately the crab will take out all of my units. If I cycle, I can force Neko to attack first, taking out Burster, and then one armor off of the crab. Kobonkor attacks and dies, Kobonkor attacks and dies. There go all of the crabs. Or, sorry, they go all my bonkers. I have to cycle past this hand, unfortunately. Her bonkers have to go back in the deck right now. There's. No play that keeps them alive, that also keeps the crab. I don't love that I've got to do four damage to Neko in order to even take one shield off that crab. I do want to get Lumen Vars on Snuffle, or Chrono even. Oh, actually, I feel a lot better doing it on Chrono right now. So Snuffle does that triple freeze. But if Neko now goes to the bottom line and I Sunrod you, you attack Burster two times and then the Burster on the top line once and you take out all both of them. Which, I guess... Actually, I also did not need to use the Sunrod to do. You were going to do that at the end of the turn. Whoops, whoops, whoops. All right, crab on the top line. I see you, I see you.
I need you to start not being as much. Because you're currently very, and I need you to not. I'm going to Shell Shield Neko, because currently it looks like I'm going to be expending a lot of my health on taking that crab out. And I'll cycle. Crappy sword so that I only have to strike you personally twice. Because if I had to strike you three times, I was gonna die. Okay, we got that one unit off the board. I'm gonna cycle so that I can get back to one of my co bonkers being out on field. Hello, oh, Numbskull. And here's the reason I did that. I put a co-bonker out. I can't believe it. I'm so dumb. I just... I, I didn't... Anyway. It happens. I got another one. Thankfully I made backups. I'm not so dumb. There's a lot of cognitive overload in this game. There's a lot of different moving pieces in the same period of time. And the combinatorics of you know, being able to move your own things and play them on a number of different cards, manage your own hand at all different times, and the enemies. I'm not saying it was a good play, but mistakes happen. And I think when I judge myself harshly for them, I teach other people that it's okay to judge me similarly harshly. Um, Gain some safety. Okay. I'm going to pop a candle down on the field and watch Snuffle do Snuffle's thing. Incredible, huge respawn as well, then I Sunrod Snuffle to get them all to do it again. That was great fun. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put a single wood head in front of Numbskull to prevent them from doing any damage here. And then, just watch as Neko takes out Numbskull. Oh, I, th that was a free action. Never mind. Oops. Give you some block, and then you'll do the same. It was a ridiculous run. Very similar to the, the, the bomb one recently as well, mind. Uh, the top has a, 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 a crown. I go for the crown. Snow cake. Apply 12 snow and consume. Honestly, I don't need that. Because Snuffle will be able to permafreeze any of the enemies in the final fight that can really be permafrozen. Uh, this goes on Lumen Vars. I'll take a single from the charm machine. I might take a second. Shroom charm. Oh, 
only thing I can really think of doing with that was putting out wart. Um, let's have a look at the final fight here. Yeah, none of the final fight is actually threatening to me unless they have a spike charm. I'm gonna take another charm from the charm machine and see if I can get more money from my greed before that fight. Balance charm. So by base, you set the HP, damage, and counter to three for a unit, which I don't want to do. All right, that's unfortunate. Move on, find another charm. Cake charm, boost effects by five and gain consume. That on a frost bell. That's pretty good. And if I give you a shroom charm first, I can apply seven frost, six stacks of demon ice, and six stacks of shroom. All of the same target. See? I told you it's really useful. All right, eye of the storm, let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Lumen Vase goes on Chrono. I'm going to Noomlin the Sunrod. And I'm going to Blaze T Snuffle. <sighs> and then I'm gonna Sunrod Snuffle. Get him, buddy. Alright, second go bonker. Has logged in. Right, snuffle. Freeze them all again. Another Kobonka. Alright, cool. First base down. You respawn and you also instantly spawn in other units. Snuffle, why don't you freeze them all again? <laughs> what? Okay, yeah. the Uber Bear, uh, when it got hit, gave Frost to a Kobonker, so the Kobonker attacked the other Kobonker. I thought I was gonna get the largest combo of all time, just take out all of the units on the field, save for the Frost Guardian. Probably save for the Frost Guardian, mind. Um, Neko's currently lined up to be able to take out the unit on the bottom line. If I use a single damage on the top line via a Snow Stick, I can force Neko to be able to take out Three units, uh, sorry, two units, the Grink and then Porcupine after. Cycle this end. Up out a Flame Water on Neko. Frost Guardian's currently attempting to attack for 12 on the top line. I can block all of that with just single shielded chrono there. If I put Frostbell on the top line, everyone takes 12 damage up there as well. Hilariously. Uh, I almost feel like I just want to cycle right now. Move towards something more relevant to the current board state. Snuffle's about to freeze everyone, and then everyone's about to die. Feels pretty relevant to the current board state to me! Bye, Frost Guardian. Thanks for all the money. Greed is now giving four damage to each Kabonka. Come on. Uh, I don't think there's any problem with our setup as it currently stands. Let's go to the heart of the storm. 
We've got to think about who stands where here, though. I definitely can't put both Kabonkas on the bottom line and risk in four turns time just dying to the Frost Bomber. So that means the top line is probably... Chrono? Kobonka, Kobonka. And then the bottom line is going to be Neko in front of Snuffle. Now here's the trick. If I Lumen Vase Chrono, every three turns, Snuffle freezes everyone for three. Oh wow, we got the frost. So on the top line, the Frost Lancer, when it attacks aimlessly, is still capable of killing either of the Kobonkers, even if... No, seven Frost! Oh, wow. I'm not that worried about the Frost Bomber on the bottom line. I'm gonna Frost Bell the top. Crusher here on the bottom line threatens to do two damage to Neko, which would set up no kills. I think I have to cycle right now looking for that Sunrod. Do I? No, Snuffle activates next turn anyway. So what me worry? I mean, you know what it could do? It would be... Two cards I can play this round. My draw is... Seven cards. Right? No, I draw six cards per round. No, seven cards. Seven cards. So that means if I gave Blaze T this turn to Snoffle, next turn they would still be acting in two turns time, which means that playing another card would cycle, and then in the third turn, I'm just contesting against Frost Bomber, which I don't want to have to do. I can slow everything down by just snow sticking the Frost Bomber. Honestly, as soon as I get Snuffle activating, it doesn't matter anymore. Game over. Okay, I'm gonna Noomlin the Yanking Snow Stick. And then this turn... I'm going to Snow Stick and Blaze Tea. And I'm going to Snow Stick the Frost Bomber. So the Frost Crusher is currently f uh, threatening four damage for Snuffle. I could even just freeze you with the snow stick. And buddy, you don't want to know what we can do with a snow stick. In fact, maybe you already do. Alright, Snuffle, freeze everyone uh, once. Yeah. And then I'm going to do 42 damage to every single person that's been frozen that once. And then if anyone lives, freeze them all again, and I'll do another 42 damage to everyone on the field. And if anyone lives that, you can freeze them all again, and I'll do another 42 damage to everyone. But if they survive that, ooh, I'm screwed. I've only got another 42 damage for everyone left.
fucking Dana. Thank you for making the game. Yeah, thanking me for playing. Nekohime with a very, very successful run there. Bling from combo 335. Four crowns gained. Gained at each available opportunity. Shell applied, 49. I need more than that and on a single unit at a single time. So we'll definitely continue looking for more Snow Dweller champions that have the ability to do that. A little bit of a teaser for the next episode. Looks like Biro doesn't have the ability to do that, but... I mean, with one shroom to all enemies. That's pretty cool, too. Until next time, my name's Rhapsody. Name of the game's been Wildfrost. Top of the left is the series playlist for all the content of the game, past, present, and future. YouTube recommendation is down below and stream past the names of the people who are generally supporting the Republic on patreon.com slash Rhapsody plays. Add above the thank to, and a special thanks this episode to Nekohime. Hopefully, you'll be enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, see you all next time. <laughs>